And the Lord be with you. Welcome to our service today. Today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And in the gospel reading, we are reminded of those beautiful words of Jesus saying to his disciples, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. And so part of my reflection today will be a reminder to all of us that um, for us to see in each other that which God sees in us. So I hope you uh, enjoy today's service, wherever you may be. I hope you're traveling well at this time. And I hope the uh, call on your lives by, by God, uh, that you hear the call and you are prepared to respond in any way that you are able. So enjoy today's service. The sentence for today comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Our spiritual reflection for today. We gather to experience the generous hospitality of our God, who meets our deepest needs. Here in this place, all are welcome into love's warm embrace. Through our baptism, we have died with Christ to sin. Let us rejoice in our victory over the power of sin and death. Therefore, let us bring our sins before the one true God in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who promises forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free of your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hi everybody, good morning. Welcome back to Sunday School. Now, as I told you a while ago, we were doing um, Old Testament stories. And just to recap, we've done creation, where God creatively and lovingly made everything. Uh, then we did Noah and the ark, and we talked about the fact that God had been very angry, but he promised not to destroy his planet again and the people in it. Um, to save them then we talked about Moses and the fact that he led the Israelites out of Egypt out of slavery and um, he was able to part the sea and today we're going to do our second part of Moses now Exodus is a very long chap uh, um, Bible book in the Bible 
and it talks about a huge part of the Israelite history. And so it has needed two sessions to go through. Um, and today we talk about one part of it that people are very familiar with, and that is the Ten Commandments. So Moses had been leading the Israelites through the desert for a very, very long time. They were out there for 40 years. Um, he had, uh, they had gone through ups and downs. They had um, run out of food. They had run out of water. Um, there were probably children being born and elderly people dying. So there had been lots going on in all this time. And sometimes the Israelites got quite cranky and frustrated um, with Moses for having taken them out of Egypt. And they kept saying, you know what, we would have been better off just dying in Egypt than wandering around this lonely part of the world for all these years. Um, but Moses, having been given instructions by God, insisted that they continue um, to find their land that God had promised, their inheritance that God had promised. And so we come to a point at which the Israelites are probably not doing the right thing. And um, they come to a mountain called Mount Sinai, which is in the middle of a desert. And there Moses goes up to talk to God because um, mountains are seen as a place where you can get closer to God. And so he goes up onto Mount Sinai with a few other people and he gets what we now call the Ten Commandments. Now, boys and girls, if you look at Exodus, he gets the Ten Commandments and then he gets like a whole bunch of subheadings for each Ten Commandment. So when he says, um, you honor your father and mother, there's like a whole bunch of rules that goes underneath that about what that means and what that looks like. When it talks about you shall not kill, there's like another whole bunch of rules about what that means, even down to the fact that they talk about what, what punishment you should get if you own an animal that kills somebody else. So boys and girls, we talk about the Ten Commandments, but they almost like the major headings for Ten Commandments. And then God outlined to Moses a whole bunch of subheadings that explains it all um, in much, much, much greater detail. So, boys and girls, after he's given the Ten Commandments to the Israelites, and the Israelites have all gone, yep, yep, we definitely will do all those things that God has told us to do, he then goes up Mount Sinai again, and for 40 days he disappears into basically this big, thick cloud of, of well, cloud and smoke, and he's gone for 40 days. Now, remember the Israelites don't always do the right thing, get a bit frustrated, and eventually towards the probably the end of the 40 days, they're like, we don't know what's happened to this Moses guy. He's disappeared. We're still just stuck out here. How about, and he says to Aaron, how about Aaron, you just make us a God. And so Aaron builds them a God out of um, the gold from all their jewelry, their earrings or their rings or whatever. So Aaron builds their God and um, they start to worship it. And God gets angry straight away. He's like onto it and he sends Moses back down. But before Moses goes, he pleads for his people and he says, come on, God, I know they're doing the wrong thing, but please be um, gracious to them. Don't don't get angry. Don't destroy all of them. So he's saying, don't don't do a Noah's Ark. We just I will, I will fix this. And God agrees. And Moses goes back down to his people and um, rouses on them. He also destroys the gold and he sprinkles the gold into the water and makes all his people drink the water. So really, all that gold is gone. So boys and girls, what does that mean for us today? Well, it means a couple of things as usual. One, um, don't put other things ahead of your relationship with God, okay? He, um, he's, he doesn't get angry like we read about in the Old Testament anymore. Um, but certainly he would be very disappointed because he loves us and he wants that love returned. So don't put other things ahead of it. And some of those other things that we sometimes put ahead of it is, um, you know, 
money, things, iPads, whatever. Um, sometimes we even put um, busyness ahead of it. We, we kind of get so busy in our lives that we forget to take time out and spend it with God. Um, we can sometimes put um, what other people think we should do ahead of God. So Aaron w built the God out of the, the calf God out of the gold because that's what other people wanted him to do. But I, I think he would have known better. So, um, so there are a number of ways in which we forget to put God first. And the story is about putting God first. Um, and then the other thing that this story taught, tells us about is that there were so many rules about how to behave appropriately um, set down by God. But in fact, the New Testament comes around and it teaches us that if we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul and mind and love our neighbours as ourselves, we will actually have all that stuff covered. And so this whole Old Testament eventually leads us into knowing and understanding the New Testament a little bit better because of the way God, Jesus came and revealed God through him. All right, boys and girls, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, sorry for when we put other things ahead of you and we pray that you will help us to keep in mind that your laws are good laws and that if we love you and love the people around us, we'll probably be doing okay. Amen. All right, boys and girls, next week is our last week on, um, on the New Testament stories. And we're going to do a good one about a giant. See you then. Bye. The reading this morning comes from Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I'm persuaded that your love is established forever and you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one and I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. And I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name and are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength and by your favour our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. 
And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. For the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I think it might be useful just to look back at where we've been to get to this point as we explore today's gospel. So we are in the uh, fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And so in our liturgical year, we've had Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the reception of the Holy Spirit. We then had Trinity Sunday, where we celebrate that divine nature of our, of our God, uh, three in one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then we enter into the the season after Pentecost. And uh, you might recall a couple of weeks ago, the gospel reading uh, was about, uh, in Matthew's gospel, of Jesus uh, calling his disciples, empowering them, giving them authority, and then sending them out. And then last week, we had the, um, the gospel reading of do not be afraid of being reassured uh, that God, God will still care for them, that God knows even when two sparrows uh, fall to the ground uh, or, or even knows the, hair, uh, the number of hairs on your head. So last week we had, I think in, um, in Matthew chapter 10, we had a number of references to do not be afraid. Verse 26, so do not be afraid. Verse 28, do not be afraid. Verse 31, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So Jesus has called and powered and sent out his disciples. He has reassured them not to be afraid, that God is with them. And then in today's gospel reading in, in Matthew, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, even though some will reject you, some will not be prepared to hear the message. Others will see in you what God sees in them. Others will see the spark of the divine. Others will see them as envoys of Jesus himself. And and they will be welcomed in and given hospitality. So Jesus is reassuring his disciples as they go out into the world to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to, um, to tell people about the kingdom of God, that while some will reject them, others will see in them what Jesus saw in them first. So I want to just share with you a little uh, story first as as I explore this idea of seeing in others what God sees in us. In my, uh, in our living room, dining room area, I have four uh, paintings, four pieces of original artwork. And um, whilst the paintings are not particularly uh, uh, special, They are incredibly special to me. They are priceless to me. These four pieces of artwork are each painted by four generations in my family. There's a piece painted by my grandmother. There's a piece painted by my father. There's a piece painted by my sister and a piece painted by my daughter, by Tamika. Now you might notice that I skipped myself and it went to my sister. And that's because anybody who knows me knows that I am not particularly creative or coordinated. I have two left feet. Um, If you stand next to me and you hear me singing, you probably 
it's a good idea for me to keep my singing in the shower, uh, keep it just uh, on my own, and um, I even describe myself often uh, as I clap out a tune, which is particularly difficult to do. So I'm not particularly gifted in the arts or coordinated, but it certainly runs in my family. It just skipped, skipped me. Um, hopefully God gave me other gifts. But I have these four pieces of artwork in my living room, and I think they're beautiful. They might not, they might be worth something, they might not be worth uh, monetary value, that is. But to me, I see in them something that perhaps no one else sees. They are a connection of me to my family. They're a connection uh, um, I, of, of myself to my grandmother, to my father, my sister, my daughter. I see more in those pieces of artwork than are necessarily than they necessarily appear um, on the surface. And I think it's this concept that I'm wanting to delve into. A few weeks ago, I spoke about how Jesus chose and called his disciples. There's some, and, and then he empowered them and sent them. There's something about his disciples, uh, something about all of us that God sees that is of immense, incredible value that might not be value on the surface. Some of us sing better than others. Uh, uh, some of us speak better than others or act better than others or can uh, uh, create art or poetry better than others. We all have different abilities. And yet, I believe to God, we are all of equal, immense value. God sees in us something that sometimes we don't even see ourselves. Through the grace and the love of God, we are precious. That beautiful passage of, uh, of John 3, 16, 17, for God so loved the world that anyone who believes in him uh, uh, has eternal life. But God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but so the world might be saved. It is through the grace of God, through God's immense love for each and every one of us, for me, for you, uh, for, for people out, out in the world. It's God's immense love for us that we are saved. God sees something in you, in me, that is of incredible value to God. And so I think that's partly the passage. Just as I see in my, those pieces of artwork, uh, something incredibly valuable. Uh, Jesus says, when he sends out his disciples, some people will reject you. Some people will not see in you that which I see in you. But others, others will. Others will see and will welcome you in and will be hospitable, hospitable, hospitable. But some, some will see in you that which I see in you, and they will welcome you into their homes, and they will give you a cup of water, a cool cup of water to refresh you, a place to sit or a place to lie. And so, Jesus is reassuring his disciples that as he is sending them out on this, this task, this difficult task, this task where others will reject, reject them and where some will uh, be like wolves amongst lambs, know that some will provide a safe space. So that applies to you and me. Take heart as we are sent out into the world, as we are called to spread the good news, to build the kingdom. Yes, some people will reject us. Some people will reject the news that we bring. They might belittle us, or they might pity that we, we, we look upon this, this religion as true. But the truth that we find in Jesus Christ, the truth that we know in our hearts, that is the truth that we are called to share. So just as we are Today, like the disciples, reassured that, that we will be received by some. What about us seeing something special in those people around us? 
whatever God sees in, in, in our brothers and sisters, in our neighbors, in the stranger in the street, do we see that of which God sees? Just like if you came to my home, you might look at these paintings and go, oh yeah, yeah, okay. That they, they're not particularly special, or some of you might like them. But when you know the story and the relationship, you might go, well, that is special. What about, uh, what about us with people? How do we try and connect with people, hear their story, find out their relationship between themselves and God? So that, I think, is one of the challenges for me in this passage, is seeing in others that which God sees in us, just like we hope others will see God in us. How much effort are we making to see God in others? So it's certainly something for me to ponder and hopefully for you to ponder as you go from this place out into the world. So may God be with you and God walk beside you, in front of you, nudge you along the way, be a light until, you, until your path. God bless everybody. Have a great week. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our God is a gracious and generous Lord, and so we bring our needs with great confidence. For the church, it is a community we will build bridges and open doors, especially to those who feel excluded, marginalised or forgotten. We bring you before you our own community of St John's and the wider community of Harvey Bay. Help us to help our neighbours, regardless of race, gender or creed. For all who accept exercise power and authority in our world, in government, business and in media, that they will create a culture of hospitality, and welcome and tolerance to all, following the example of Christ himself. For all those who have left their homeland and family in search of a better life, that they may find the security and peace which every human being needs. For those who do not seek the needs of others or hear their cries, for those who deliberately seek to exclude or ignore, that their eyes may be opened and their hearts softened. And we pray for all those that suffer from any form of violence. Help us to step up to the mark and stand firmly in the face of injustice. For all who have died, that they may be welcomed into the peace of our own true homeland in heaven. God, our Father, your love ever lasts, lasts forever. Listen to the prayers we bring before you for ourselves and our world. And in your mercy, answer them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, my brothers and sisters in faith, we are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
And so I invite you now, if you are with somebody else as you watch this video, I invite you to turn to them and offer them God's peace, God's blessing. Men of faith, rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak in your broken past complete. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with each of you and your loved ones, now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. 